Hello folks, and welcome back to another case study, where I talk about and analyze some of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. In this segment, I'll be discussing the strange disappearance of a then 43-year-old rock collector, art teacher, and outdoor enthusiast, who despite countless hours of searches and resources thrown into the case, his whereabouts continues to baffle many. I covered this case briefly in Volume 31, but decided to take a deeper look into it. Before we begin, here's a quick summary of what occurred on August 14th of 2020. Trevor Bazil left his home on that beautiful Friday afternoon in Panaca, Nevada, where he would then proceed into the hills just south of town. At an area he regularly ventured to, Trevor would spend a few hours indulging in one of his passions, rock collecting. But as the hours ticked on by and the day turned into night, the man would never return home, thus kicking off one of the largest search and rescue efforts ever conducted in that part of Nevada. Trevor, a well-respected member of the community, had what many would call a good life. He was a husband, father, and a friend to many. He held a high-paying position as an art teacher at the Lincoln County School District, where he spent several years teaching K-12 through graders. Following his disappearance, there would be an outpouring of support from both the school district and the community overall, with additional support from countless businesses and agencies from all over the state. So as you can see, the man was well liked and made quite the impression with those who came to know him. I'm sure you can also imagine the monumental search effort as well, but we'll get into that later. First and foremost, let's go ahead and take a look at Trevor's bizarre disappearance. After failing to return home on the night of August 14th, his family grew concerned and set out to find him. Eventually, locating his vehicle deep within the hills near Miller Wash, just south of Panica, the town where they had lived. Miller Wash, an area he frequented many times before, is awash in the greater Great Basin National Park region. The area encompasses nearly 80,000 acres and is located in eastern central Nevada, near the Utah border and about 290 miles north of Las Vegas. It is a dry and mountainous stretch of land between the Sierras and the Wasatch Mountains. Topographically, the area is known as the Basin and Range Province, and is notable for its ancient Bristol Cone Pines, Lehman Caves, and its many peaks. Established in 1986, the area draws in thousands of visitors every year, offering camping, hiking, biking, and rock hunting, which is exactly what brought Trevor to the area. Let's take a look at some of the Google Map images, just to give you an idea of what Miller Wash looks like. So as you can see, the area is quite vast. On top of that, temperatures can soar in the summer months. At the time of his disappearance, it was August, which would pose a challenge for those involved in the search effort, but we'll get into that in a bit. On the day he went missing, Trevor was wearing a tan shirt, blue jeans, and a pair of brown hacking boots. Trevor is five foot nine, 225 pounds, and has a light beard. He was given a clean bill of health by those who knew him, and was used to being out in the area and accustomed to the extreme temperatures. He was also known to carry a backpack with provisions and plenty of snacks and water. I was unable to find any information on whether or not he carried a phone with him when he set out that day, but something tells me he probably did as it would be the logical thing to do. The search for Trevor really began in the hours after he failed to return home that night. 
His family gathered together and set out to Miller Wash, where they would then eventually find his vehicle, deep within the hills of the Wash, and south of town on Oak Wells Road. They spent the night and early hours of the morning searching for any other sign of him, before enlisting help from local law enforcement agencies. The official search would kick off on Saturday, August 15th, and would be one of the largest search efforts in the history of eastern Nevada. These efforts were overseen by Trevor's family, family friend Sean Frayner, and many local organizations. Law enforcement, park rangers, drone operators, search and rescue personnel, and over 100 volunteers gathered at the wash. Five dog teams from the Rocky Mountain Search and Rescue Division were then joined by dozens of searches on ATVs and dirt bikes to help cover the vast and rugged terrain not easily accessible on foot. Not long after this, search dogs would eventually pick up Trevor's scent, where they would then follow it for seven miles throughout the area, zigzagging all over the landscape, leading to a bucket of rock. Those who examined the bucket of rocks stated that it most likely belonged to Trevor. Unfortunately, this would be the last and only clue pointing to his whereabouts, despite the extensive search effort that would continue to follow in the days and even weeks to come. Now, I am unsure if those seven miles covered by the dogs follow Trevor's typical rock hunting path or not. Seems like a bit of a hike to me, especially for a seemingly casual activity like rock hunting. But then again, I don't know much about the hobby, or how passionate he really was about getting those rocks. I am curious though, how easy or difficult it would be to track prints out there on that terrain. If you live out in the area, let us know. Is this a place frequented by other visitors? Are there other trails or roads accessible to the public? Let's go ahead and pull up some satellite images, just to give you an idea of what both Travis and Search and Rescue were up against. So as we can see just by looking at these images, there just isn't a whole lot of other options out there. And this applies to both Oak Wells Road and Miller Wash in general. One would assume it would not be that easy to get lost, especially for someone who knew the area well, until you wander off the beaten path. The real mystery here is how far did Travis go from the point where his vehicle was found. The surrounding area is mostly vast and desolate, however, there are patches of thick brush and jagged rock and dried up creek beds. The area in question sits almost directly in the middle of smaller mountains, which is easily visible from the wash and just a few miles away. To the south, we have Mosey Mountain. To the north, there's Dow Mountain. And to the west, we have Little Mountain, the closest of the three. Oak Wells Road, which begins on the outskirts of Panaka and goes all the way down to an area known as the Crossroads, where it ends and the Beaver Dam Road begins, continues south on Beaver Dam Road and it'll take you far into the interior and even out to Utah, but continue north and it'll eventually bring you back to Panaka. Well, by looking at the maps, there are several other unnamed private and service roads that intersect at various points, thus making it more frustrating for those involved in the search. But logic would tell us that Travis left Panaka, traveled southeast to Miller Wash, and would most certainly venture back, a path he traveled on numerous occasions before. But what was so different about this trip? If I were a rock collector, and depending on the kinds of rock I was hunting, I'd probably be searching the mines or surrounding areas around those mines. Is there such a mine near the area Travis went missing? Lincoln County still has a few historical mining sites folks can visit. About a 20-minute drive to the north of Panaka, there's Piyoshi, 
and an hour to the south there's Delamar Mine. But I am unaware of any other mines in the area of Miller Wash. Now that's not to say there isn't any others, so if you're familiar with the area, let us know. When searchers discovered the bucket of rocks, they conducted a grid search in the area surrounding it with the aid of air support and additional ground teams. By the end of the second day, search dogs lost a scent. On day three, temperatures soared as they would then focus their efforts in the area around Trevor's vehicle. Sheriff Kerry Lee stated that canine searches could only be conducted at night and in the early morning hours due to the extreme heat. So let's switch gears and go ahead and talk about what may have occurred out there. There's a whole bucket of possibilities, but I'll narrow it down to a few more logical explanations. Despite the lack of evidence, some believe a mountain lion may have been responsible. Others believe Trevor may have been victim to foul play. Did he see or come across something he wasn't supposed to? Drug and illegal activity can be found all over the state. And without evidence, it's difficult to settle on this theory. Trevor was an intelligent man, and I'm sure he knew what places to go to and what places not to. Was Trevor suicidal? Well, from a distance, he appeared to have it all. A loving family, and he was well liked by many in the community. But for some folks, sometimes having it all means nothing when there's depression involved. However, there was never any indication pointing to the scenario. And according to the family and friends who knew him, the man was content with his life and was looking forward to the future. Trevor also appeared to be in good physical and mental health. But anyone out there in that heat could be subject to any number of things no matter how prepared one might think they are. On that day he went missing, daytime temperatures were reported to be as high as 110 degrees. Now, it is possible Trevor could have been injured or was involved in some kind of accident, thus abandoning his bucket of rock before returning to his vehicle. He could have become delirious and wandered into oblivion as the sun continued to bake the land. The area covered by search and rescue was quite vast and thick with foliage in certain parts that even for drones and airplanes, visibility was difficult at times. Could Trevor have sought shade and refuge under the cover of this foliage? Did he find a rock or cave to hunker down into until temperatures cooled down? Did he run out of water? The question remains. Did he carry a cellular phone? If so, why didn't he phone in for help? Did he leave his phone inside the vehicle? If you have any information about this, let us know, as I was unable to find anything about it. So based on what we do and don't know, I believe the most likely scenario is that Trevor had some kind of accident or emergency, causing him to abandon his rocks and wander off. In his worsening physical and mental state, with the temperatures soaring as high as they were, he became lost and delirious in his attempt to return to civilization. And in this predicament he found himself in, he most likely sought the protection of shelter under a rock or thicket of brush, where he remains undetected by searches to this day. Had it not been for the extreme heat, I believe those search dogs would have found something that would have pointed us in the right direction. This case reminds me of another disappearance that occurred on April 29th of 1981, where another rock collector by the name of, quote, Doc Maurice Dometz vanished near Devil's Head Lookout inside Pack National Forest in Colorado. He too had seemingly vanished into thin air, and not even his tools were ever found. Now over the years, others have gone missing in eastern Nevada, but I am unaware of anyone else in the Miller Wash area, or even the area around Panaka, but I could be wrong. 
I strongly believe that the clues to Trevor's disappearance are still out there, waiting to be discovered by a future hacker or explorer. There's a whole lot of space out there, and we can only hope that in time we'll begin to understand what really happened in this mind-boggling case. If you have any information, contact the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office at 775-962-5151. Thank you for joining me, and may we never forget the sad and strange disappearance of Trevor Brazil.